welcome to the Career Coffee Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Urban, Certified Career Strategist and Executive Coach, removing career roadblocks so you can achieve more impact, influence, and income. Welcome to Career Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Aaron Urban. I'm a Certified Executive Coach. What I do is I help driven, evolving, and emerging leaders like yourself remove career roadblocks so you can achieve more impact, influence, and income. Today, we'll be talking about impact in the workplace and potentially improving income and your influence with Clara. And wait until you hear more about that. If you are just tuning into the podcast and live show and you've never seen or heard my voice before, my name is Aaron Urban. You can find more about me at coachyurban.com. Now, what we are talking about today is career confidence, confidence and diversity superpowers and how to leverage your unique gifts to elevate your career. Now, this is number three in the Forbes Coaches Council special summer series. And this live event is, of course, available as a podcast. And uh, my special guest today is Clara Angelina Diaz. Anderson. She's a master certified coach and she will be talking about how to leverage both authenticity and diversity to help you thrive in your career. Some golden nuggets we'll be talking about today is how to unlock your authentic career confidence, overcome roadblocks to authenticity, and own your diversity as a superpower. Because as we all know, diversity isn't just skin deep. So I'm really excited to have you join us today and tuning in to for a deeper conversation about what it takes to own your unique gifts and show up 100% in your strength zone. So whether you're tuning in live or watching the replay later, please do put your comments, questions. I want you to show up and join us for a great conversation. If you're just tuning in, say hi, say where you're from. I'd love to welcome you to the show. Now, Clara is awesome. She's a bilingual certified master coach with a specialty in executive leadership coaching for women of color. Now, a little bit more about her. It goes much more than that. She's also the author of the book and self-coaching program, Create Your Best Year One Day at a Time. She works with some of the best in the business leadership development industry with the likes of Harvard Business School and NAACP. Without further ado, I am excited to introduce Clara to the show. Great to see you. It's great to see you, Erin. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, I got I got to know, I got to know, because inquiring minds want to know, what was the catalyst for you to get into this deeper work? As a master oh. certified coach, what, what was that? Because there's, there's usually something in there that that spark that ignited that transition to be a master certified coach. For sure. Well, you know, first and foremost, I I was born in the Dominican Republic. And ever since I decided, my my parents decided for me that I was going to migrate to the United States with with my siblings, I um, wanted to make the absolute most of, you know, the, the sacrifice, literally, that my parents were making for me. And so to I, I decided to become a, a master coach after um, being a coach because the first question that people would ask me when I would be in speaking engagements or giving workshops was, you know, a person uh, that looked like me uh, would come up to me and say, how did you become a coach? And mm-hmm. it was literally my dream to then be able to help others become coaches and to, you know, increase the the face of coaching and, and bring more um, diverse um, people of color, women of color um, into this amazing industry. It's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I want to say hi to Gloria who's tuning in from Houston, Texas. So Clara, backing up a little bit, what got you into coaching? Um, you know, you, you made that transition to be a master certified coach, which, by the way, if you're not familiar with that process, is not an insignificant transition. OK, it does require a lot of time and energy and dedication yeah. to become master certified coach. But how did you transition into coaching? What what inspired you to do that? Yeah. That? Well, you know, I started my my career, um, Erin, that's a great question. I started my career in corporate America. My my first corporate job was with Bank of America. 
And um, at the young age of 18, I had my first salary job. I worked in, in the banking world and I continued to c- climb the corporate ladder. Um, but I feel very um, empty inside, you know, which a mm-hmm. lot of people could probably um, that are watching could probably relate, you know, to being told that, you know, a title and a salary, you know, it, that you check the boxes and that, you know, that's it for you that, you know, that's, that, that's what you're made of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I had a, um, a, a near death experience that really brought me to really question, mm-hmm. you know, why am I here? Why am I still on earth? And um, that journey took me um, to um, this period of my life where I started to paint <laughs> yeah. and I within that in, in in that artist community, I met a coach mm-hmm. and working with this coach, I started achieving things that I didn't think I would achieve uh, until I was maybe in my 60s. Oh. Um, yeah, we're, you know, something very simple was that I, you know, when I started painting, I wanted to have an art show. And I thought mm-hmm. that you had to go to art school. And I, there was like all these in my mind, I, I thought there were like all these steps that you had mm-hmm. to, to take in order to um, have that dream. But he made me see, you know, working with him, like there is a more, um, there's an alternate path to what you want. And that one that I deserved what I dreamed and what I desired um, and that there was an alternate path and that the resources were literally right there for me and that all I needed to do was just go for it. And it amazed me. It amazed me that there was a person, I didn't even know that there was this thing called a coach um, that I, I was like, Oh my God, I want to do that for people. I want to, I want to give people permission to say, you know, I I want that to be able to voice their desires, to be able to be intentional and to be active creators of their lives. I, Sorry. yeah, I mean, it, it it just brings chills to me when I talk about it because I I was the product of coaching and and I just wanted to do that for others. That's and that's a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing that because no, it's course. it's very true. I mean. Part of the reason I decided out of coaching or consulting to focus on coaching was because I transformed my life based on the coaching and mentoring I received. And I hadn't received that coaching and mentoring at a very pivotal point in my career. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have written a best-selling book. I wouldn't have a live show. I wouldn't have a podcast. I wouldn't be helping people. It just, it, it would not be. The way it is now, I'd probably still be in the corporate um, ladder. And if and that's someone's path, that's your path. There's not neither right nor wrong, except for the in, intention we attach to it. Okay. But when you're called to do something and you realize that you have the ability, the tools at your fingertips to help elevate people, that's just, there aren't really words for that. Seriously, there really isn't. It's just, you know, a joy and a a bliss and and a, and a true honor um, to be able to to support people in that way. I mean, I <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm overjoyed by the work that I do. That's wonderful, and that you know I'm sure you'll agree with me when you get the success notes and the and the hey this worked or you wouldn't believe this happened or oh, I see you know and you just have that feeling and there's nothing I mean, you can't even describe it. It's just like. <gasps> It just makes your whole day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, Erin, for me is is that when you see your clients achieve so much more than they even thought they could. Right. Exactly. And 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 they're just extremely surprised. And you're like, I, I knew it. I just <laughs> I I you know, there's there is a dream beyond the dream and mm-hmm. and um, a coach can just help you be open and receptive, right? To, to the best that the universe has for you. And I feel extremely privileged to do this work. That's wonderful. I want to welcome Carnesia for tuning in from Spring, Texas. Good to see you, Carnesia. And this is a good segue or conversation. You recently completed a project that's quite transformational for a yes. major organization. And part of that was helping those individuals achieve and understand their potential and achieve that from a lens of diversity. Yes. Now, can you uh, share a little bit about 
What was that at just high level? And most importantly, what was your key takeaway from that? For sure, for sure. So this this organization, it's like one of the um, the biggest financial companies um, in the United States. And um, their, their biggest issue was that their um, high level associates of color were leaving them. They weren't, mm-hmm. um, you know, like they were maybe reaching the level of manager, but not going into um, the C-suite. Um, quite honestly, and, and, and they were losing, you know, like losing your people is like the biggest loss that, that an organization can have. And so, um, this, this program that, that I was, I was a part of and coaching these individuals, um, basically took them through a process of being able to see, um, one is like grow their self-awareness and be able to see their value, be able to truly express their value, um, in in economic terms, but also to be able to communicate, you know, in um, in in ways where their ideas could truly be received. Mm-hmm. Um, to also learn to manage up, and ultimately um, to be able to uh, coach um, their um, their employees, their managers, the people that they work w- that they work with, um, and be able to have that communication that is clear and concise and um, that really helps to be effective in the workplace. Um, and and then for them to be able to feel that they are valued and that they are expressing their value. Mm-hmm. because quite honestly, it's like, the the and this is this is the organization's um, attempt, right? To wanting to create an inclusive workplace, mm. and so as we were discussing earlier, Erin, that you know, coaching is one of those tools, right? That really helps um, in this work of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Is is one of those tools that helps um, organizations to be equitable um, and to be inclusive. Right, right. Now, I I want to capture some of your key takeaways and what what you're thinking of, you know, moving forward, having that future focus. But before we get there, I'd like to just touch on briefly, what are some of, or maybe not briefly, maybe in detail, what are some of the challenges you see for those people who identify with being diverse? Yeah. And what maybe are some just fairly straightforward tactics that, that maybe some uh, just a you know checkbox or a step or something that they can start looking at how to leverage that as their superpower and how to own that impact and gift that they do, truly do have. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the major challenges, Erin, is one is, is the workplace itself, you know, mm-hmm. not being a place that um, really that, that is inclusive or that, you know, that, that is really open to diversity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those kind of workplaces who say like, yeah, you know, they, they subscribe to, you know, equal opportunity employment because that's what the law says, but. And that's so, that's such, I'm sorry. <laughs> As someone who, you know, helps people in career transition advancement specifically, it's just, that's not true. Exactly. It's not true. So, 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 so that's, so so that's one of the major challenges, right? It's, it's Mm -hmm. your workplace is not inclusive. Like you don't, you don't, you know, you don't feel like you belong. (laughs) (laughs) You're already there. You're like, uh, I'm the only person that, you know, whatever, you know, your, whatever that category of diversity is for you, either, you know, it'd be your race or, you know, your, your gender or your age, whatever that is. Um, your workplace is not inclusive. So what is one thing that you can do, right? One, one thing that you can do is, in is one. And so what, what that, what, what that does, right. Is that it, it ignites in you, um, you know, the famous imposter syndrome. It makes you feel like you're there by chance that it's not because of your merit that you're there. You know, it makes you, there's a whole slew of feelings that come up. and so. One is just acknowledging the fact that you're not crazy, you know, that maybe it's it, the the environment itself, right, is not is not really taking you in. So if that's the case, like, is there um, some some is there an ally? Right. Is there a person in um, with power? 
right? That can, that can help you, that can um, speak for you, that can, mm-hmm. that, um, that you can connect with. Mm-hmm. Um, is there another person like yourself, you know, can you go to HR and speak about your concerns? Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes there are things in place that maybe we just don't know about, or maybe HR is waiting for someone to give feedback, you know, and that comes out, of, that comes at a cost, <laughs> you know, it, you may or may not be taken seriously. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But um, the other the other thing that I, that I want people to consider is that um, diversity. You know, this it's it's a hot topic right now, right? This diversity, equity, and inclusion because mm-hmm. um, th- at this time, especially you know, with with COVID and with the racial reckoning in this country, um, there is a demand for organizations to really look deeply at their diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so Mm -hmm. if you identify as a person who is diverse, know that companies are looking for you, (laughs) number one. So you're an asset. Mm -hmm. Um, And number two is also to, you know, to not be afraid of really owning, you know, your talents, your capabilities, who you are, Um, everything that you've had to overcome in order to be where you are. That is an asset. Your obstacles um, could, you know, the the fact that you overcame those obstacles are a huge strength. Mm -hmm. And so just owning that, right? One is recognizing the environment. Mm -hmm. Two, recognize that you are not crazy. Looking to see, right, who is that ally? Who is, like, what's already in place for me? Mm -hmm. Right. And then seeing how your um, everything that you've had to overcome to Mm -hmm. be here um, is is an asset for you instead of thinking of yourself as less than. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for those of you tuning in or watching the replay later or listening to the podcast, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, have you experienced, you know, diversity comes in many different flavors. And we were talking before the show, you know, it's not just the obvious things. It it can be neurodiversity. It can be very subtle diversity. Take, for example, as a female who was more of a dominant persona in my industry in my early career, it was, when I moved to Texas, a a shock for them. (laughs) My, my, how I presented myself was not what the cultural norm was, right? So I was very much an outlier and I was punished for that until I figured out how to adjust and also own my impact and own my own unique gifts and strengths. But I'd love to hear from you, you know, those of you who are tuning in either now or later, you know, what are some of the challenges you've experienced if you identify with being a diverse individual? You know, what what are some of the things that you're, you're what's coming up for you, what roadblocks you're experiencing? Because just to be really honest, and we were talk, chatting about this before the show started as well, you know, part of the problem we have, particularly in I would have to say Europe and America, Canada, et cetera, well, in general, really, There's no matter where you are, what country, but it, the, the, the workplace as we know it, specifically corporate cultures, was created by a certain demographic. Okay. Let's Family. call it men. Let's, let's yeah, call it how it is. Typically white, unless you're white in an American country or something like that. But it was male, it's male dominated. So, you know, I can say, you know, I have been in the position of having to make tough choices because I knew I was going to a very male dominated field as an architect when I left school. You know, what what is the best path for me to achieve what I want without constantly getting knocked down and go, oh, well, you're just, you know, a woman. Go design windows mm. or fluff pillows. That's what I was told. I was told I was a pillow fluffer. That mm. also has a very bad connotation, by the way, for those of you who are a little bit older. <laughs> mm. But um, yeah, and it was offensive. And I went through a lot of challenges to you know, make my way in my career. But for those of you, we have to understand, okay, the context, we're, we're, we're now taking apart those structures. Very strong change cycle. A lot of opportunity right now. What can you as a diverse individual own? What's your unique gift? Because I mentioned, I mentioned um, that you're not crazy. You're also beautifully unique. Can you see that as a gift? 
Right. You know, Aaron, there's there's a term um, called internalized oppression, right? Mm-hmm. Where so there's, you know, all these these this, these systems that have been this this workspace, right? That have been created um, by um, predominantly white men, mm-hmm. right? Where um, that has been set up so that um, those individuals who are not that um, don't thrive, and mm-hmm. so. So many of us are, you know, that go into the workplace, you know, just think that we have to just work harder. And, you know, if only I get that, uh, that, that next degree um, or you know, certification. That, yeah, that next certification, if I just get there earlier and, you know, and I just smile um, and, and dress like everyone else, you know, but know that like that comes at, the, at an emotional cost and that, you know, there is um, like one is just to recognize that that is there, you know, and, and from and I and I speak from personal experience because I was that person who thought that, you know, if I just got that next degree and if I just, you know, dress nicer and I worked a little harder and then I, I feel like the harder I work, the more work I was given. Um, you know, there is there's there's, there's very un, there is these unspoken rules. Um, of work that, you know, knowing the right person, making sure that, you know, you're able to communicate in a, in a certain way um, to make sure that you, that your work is spoken about um, when you're not in the room, like, right. right. Who's that sponsor that's going to be um, speaking about you when the next big project comes up. Um, and then just, you know, like, just owning the fact that, you know what, I'm, I am doing great work. Um, although I'm not being celebrated. I mean, that's not cool, right? Like, let's change that. Mm -hmm. But you like being strong internally, um, can make a very big difference because the other side of this too, is like, it's energetically as well. If, if you can own the fact that you're like, I do amazing things. I have overcome um, amazing odds to be here. I know my work is great. I mean, the 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 numbers show it. The data shows it. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you if you can truly own that inside, um, you are going to have. You, you are going to feel more confident to be able to, uh, you know, maybe ask um, the the CEO for lunch or have a conversation or be right. able to like craft your your value narrative and. And when they come to ask you about it, so what are you up to? You'll know exactly what you're going to say, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like those things that are put in play, um, you put those things in play because you, you feel that you're worthy. I mean, there's, you know, many levels to yeah, right to, to this, but just owning that um, can mm-hmm. make such a big difference, you know, for those of us who feel othered or um, who are not the majority. Right. Right. And I'm going to say, you know, regardless of who you are, human beings in general tend to struggle when it comes to owning your impact mm. in general. But when you feel othered, as you put it, you feel like you are the one, the odd person out, um, just different. You're not fitting in for whatever. You don't see other people like you or people who act like you or believe like you believe, whatever that is. Yes, it can be a struggle. So, you know, it's interesting you mentioned, you know, really owning that and, and, uh, and empowering yourself internally, because when you lift yourself up internally, you start to have very different conversations. Correct. You start showing up very different. Because when you feel disempowered, that's when it's easier, regardless of who you are, or what your diversity component is, then it's easier to be defensive or maybe not be able to have that conversation or have the forehead smack later. Oh, I should have said this. I didn't oh. because I didn't, I, you know, and not feel like, well, I just need to be grateful for having a job. No, oh. <laughs> no. Oh. you know, own that. And that's for anybody listening. You own your impact. Right. Because the conversations are very different. Your actions are very different because then what you're doing is neurologically, you're supporting the right outcomes. Correct. Internal narrative is in align with your goals versus the other way. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. It's like in what you said, you know, about the, you're neurologically um, supporting 
um, the, the outcomes that you want. And, and so I think what a big message that, you know, of, of you asked Aaron, what can a, a person do mm-hmm. is to really be intentional about like, you know, what are my goals? What are my values? Like, um, what kind of organization do I want to be a part of? What kind of mission do I want to contribute to? And I just feel like the opportunities, like, I, I, I see um, people running into this a lot um, in my in, in in my coaching work where they feel like the opportunity is out there. Right. You know, the opportunity is out there. And, you know, if someone would just give me an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, and I want people to know like that, that are watching this, that you are the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are what people are looking for. So if you can see yourself as the opportunity and practice being able to really express your value um, from with, with asset language, right. Mm-hmm. To talk about what, what you have done as opposed to what you haven't done, right. Mm-hmm. What you can do as opposed to what you can't do. Right. Um, especially, you know, for, for us women that sometimes it's so hard for us to, um, to really, to, to talk about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right, we're like, oh, you know what? My work will speak for itself. No, it won't. No, it won't. <laughs> oh, your work will not speak for itself. Right? And typically, you'll be given more work the harder you work. That's right, because right. Because you're not speaking up. You're not saying, oh, you know, I really love to lead that 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 project, or I'm really looking for this. You're not articulating your goals, and when you don't speak up for yourself, people just assume you want more work. Oh, she's a really hard worker. She'll get it done. Let's get. Right, right. So let's let's just normalize speaking uh, speaking your value. If mm-hmm. you've never done um, it, it, it's, it's called the value narrative about yourself. You can Google that. There's plenty of, of steps to do that. Um, you can contact me or contact Aaron to help you with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's so much of the work that I do is really helping people really bring out that that what I call that authentic confidence mm-hmm. in themselves, and to even look back at you know their um, their lineage, and see mm-hmm. you know what what did your mother have to do in order for you to be in the place that you are? What did your grandmother's grandmother's grandmother? Right, have to do in order for you to stand where you are, right? And mm-hmm. and how can you um, become their wildest dream? Mm-hmm. They are what you want. You are what they wish they could have had. Mm-hmm. So it's you know it, it and and that's a, one way of of overcoming that imposter syndrome because quite honestly. I, um, you know, I work with organizations and that's really hard work to do. That takes a long time to change environments. And I think one more direct, um, a a more direct and effective way for people to change is by changing themselves. Yes. And that's where all true change starts. Yeah. Right. Is inside. Now, Gloria had something interesting to say. Um, Thank you, Gloria, for that contribution. She said, I learned I don't give myself enough credit. And she finds support groups, particularly women, be very empowering. And it's interesting she mentioned that because one of my good friends mentions her personal board of directors. Mm -hmm. And it is a group of supportive women who are empowering and lifting each other up. Different industries, doesn't have to be within your workplace. But really connecting with these individuals, sharing stories, giving each other guidance, support, and, and helping remind you that you matter and you have value and you can show up in that space. And I have someone to talk to that kind of gets where you're coming from is very, very helpful. Absolutely. Creating yeah. community is, mm-hmm. is very, very important yeah. um, in order to sustain your confidence mm-hmm. um, and, and also to, to help you move further in your career. Because as we know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> Yes, it is yes. who you know and, and how much of an ally they are. Correct. You know, it's, that's another thing women tend to struggle with more than ambitious men is leveraging their network. Mm-hmm. Because we're very, we tend to be more emotion driven. We don't want to be in a position on someone. So we're like, oh, well, you know, I don't leverage. I leverage a leverage relationship is a little bit more transactional. A lot of women feel uncomfortable about that. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know more about that, 
feel free to PM either one of us or look it up. There's a little bit more about how, what is a leveraged relationship? What does that look like? How can you leverage your network? And, and you know, it's it, loosely termed, it would be, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, but that's basically how it works. <laughs> you know, you're showing up in a space for someone so they can show up in a space for you. Right. Within in, in my my coaching certification training, I teach this one exercise called my circle of influence, mm -hmm. where I have people literally make a list of like, who are the people that I know who love and respect me? Mm -hmm. And who needs to know me? Like, who needs to know that I exist? And how can I um, create um, a value narrative and, a, and, a, and an ask to asking the people that already love and respect me? to introduce me to those who I can help, mm -hmm. right? And so, and, and I think for women, uh, we need to come a little bit more from this place and normalize, you know, like I said, again, like owning your value, like what is it that you bring to the table? What's the difference that you're making? What's the difference that you're hoping to make? Um, because then it's genuine. It's just saying, look, like mm -hmm. for me, it's like, you know, I'm a coach and I work with, you know, with diverse women. I help them increase their confidence like, who do you know who can use my help? And it's it's super genuine and it's real. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, that that term salesy or anything no. like that. It's just, <laughs> I know I'm great. I know I do something that's transformational. Like, who do you know who's in pain who could use my help? Um, mm -hmm. So just, you know, maybe just um, changing your mindset around how you um, engage others could could be a game changer sometimes. Right. And understanding that what you do is, is empowering and important to other people. Yeah. Instead of thinking that it's it's you're imposing upon someone for making an ask. Keep in mind that what you do has value. And I would love to hear from those of you tuning in. You, do you feel like you have enough of that goals focused value narrative in your workplace or in your you know life, coaching, career life, whatever that looks like for you, depending on whether you're an entrepreneur or otherwise? Um, Hussein says awareness and culture of accepting the other opinion, good listening and choosing words of the conversation, distinguish conversation, promote authenticity. Yes, wow. very, very eloquently put. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. So, yeah, and speaking of conversations, we sh we talked a little bit about how you're introducing the coaching mindset to include and encourage and elevate D and I within these workplaces. Right. You had a few uh, takeaways from that. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts and how maybe the folks that are tuning in can leverage some of these gold nuggets to help themselves understand, okay, how can I leverage a coaching mindset to help myself elevate and empower my career and life existence? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 one of the first pillars of, of coaching is being a really good listener, mm -hmm. right? And being a good listener means that you have heard what the other person said and you can paraphrase what they said. Mm -hmm. And most of us who are not trained coaches or trained and, you know, formally trained in communication don't know this, but you being able to say, you know, what I heard you say, Aaron, was, and repeat it back to you, you know, with some of the word, the exact words that you use, as this mm -hmm. gentleman has just mentioned, literally builds rapport, like instant rapport um, with the other individual, right? Which makes, which within within a diverse workplace can um, really help help two people who are completely different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really feel the sense of, um, of connection. Right. And, and when you feel connection, you know, you're more open to working with this person and being more innovative. Um, and so that's one thing is, is just like engaging that active listening skill, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're listening, not, not when you're not just hearing, but you're, you're, you're listening and then you're paraphrasing what that person said. And also for clarity, to make sure that you understand what the person is saying and that the person understands what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, and, and that you're able to also um, not, you know, like, I don't want to say the word take control of the situation of, of the conversation, but um, be more mindful of the narrative of, right. you know, of like, 
what is like what what is going on here? What is being said? What's being understood? Mm -hmm. um, just really um, taking you know words are powerful. Um, yes. And and so meeting someone, uh, listening to someone, and repeating back to them what they said is neurologically comforting. It to is. The other person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is um, when you're working with someone and taking on this coaching mindset, right, the, the, uh, one of the other pillars of coaching, um, coaching assumes that the other person has within them the answers to the questions that mm -hmm. they're, the, the answers to their questions, that they don't need to just be told, that there is um, wealth and richness within them that needs to come out. Um, and that you, you hired someone because they're smart, because they're brilliant and, right. you know, like let them be brilliant. And so coaching, um, can really help someone, um, uh, you know, can, can help you bring brilliance out in others, mm -hmm. even in your supervisors, you know, so that's, you know, this, this idea of managing up. Um, so if you are the kind of person that can help another person bring out their brilliance, even though you're not called a coach, but you have coaching skills, right. you know, that can really take you further in your organization. Yeah. And also coaching, it encourages neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is the ability to form, accept, and maybe implement new ideas and leading into, into innovation. Right. And what's interesting about that is when we start considering that coaching encourages neuroplasticity and agility, mental agility, then we ourselves start to be able to make more of the unconscious conscious, become more aware. We can improve ourselves, how we show up, and then therefore influence and empower others without necessarily quote unquote, having to do it. Like you, it's not an effort. Um, right. Influence truly is how you show up. <laughs> It's your credibility factor that that leads into influence. But yeah, so this is really exciting work. And it sounds like you've got some ideas about how to leverage the coaching mindset. So becoming, you know, adopting some of the abilities of a coach, the tools of coaching to help individuals elevate their careers, elevate how they show up in the workplace and empower themselves and others. So that's uh, that's that's huge. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and it's 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 really exciting. Actually, it's a it's a really exciting time to for for the industry itself because mm -hmm. you know not like what so I, I work with with two different buckets of people, right? Which is those who are already within organizations and they're like Clara, like I've I've hit a roadblock and I need to figure out okay, do I leave this organization or how can I grow? How can I change myself um, mm -hmm. in order, improve myself in order to grow here? And so coaching is one of those tools is saying, look, like you don't have to disclose the fact that you're a coach, but you can take on coaching skills mm -hmm. um, and become that leader um, that you're looking for. And that's really at the core of my mission is you becoming the leader you seek. All right. Exactly. And then there's those individuals who, you know, want a piece of that, the, the pie of that multi-billion dollar industry that you and I are part of and are saying, you know, I have amazing expertise. People come to me um, for help and advice all the time. Like, how can I leverage um, this opportunity and, um, and really help others? How can I help others help themselves? Um, and, and so I work with, with, those, with those two buckets of people. And, and both for me are super important because as I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. coaching, I see coaching as a tool to really drive equity and inclusion um, mm -hmm. in the workplace and also in the business space. Right, right. So what's next steps for you, Clara? What's what's on the horizon? Mm, what's on the horizon? Um you know, I have some really um, exciting projects uh, Projects this September. I um, have a, um, some really exciting exciting executive coaching projects. I'm mm -hmm. um, working with leaders of color um, here in the Boston area. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a business advisor. So also helping some uh, minority business owners um, grow their business. Um, but the thing that I am most excited about, my bliss is teaching coaching. And, mm -hmm. 
you know, increasing the, the, the coaching um, workforce. And so I have uh, my next coaching certification that's happening in September. Um, and then an amazing network that I am creating um, with 65 plus coaches that I have certified uh, where we are growing our, our pra- practice and our ability and our businesses um, and referring work to each other and transforming lives together. So I'm really excited about all those things. Well, that's wonderful. It sounds like you've got a lot of very joyful things in front of you. That's wonderful to see you thrive. And when we thrive, our clients thrive. Everybody benefits from that that experience. Well, it was lovely having you on the show. We learned a lot. This has been very insightful and, and also, I think, uplifting. Great. I don't know about any of you have tuned in, but I, I certainly feel like where we're headed, because we're in such a strong change cycle right now. There are so many unknowns, you know, are we going back to work? Are we not? What type of model is it? Um, what, how could I, you know, things are different now. Expectations are different. Conversations are different. What can I say? What can I not say? What, how do I show up? How, you know, what, there's so many unknowns. And quite frankly, some of us haven't been in group gathering and over a year. <laughs> so we're not quite sure how to navigate that um, along with anything else that's going on. So giving people a roadmap of how to advance their careers, elevate their experience overall and empower themselves is tremendous. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, Erin, thank you so much for having me on the show. And um, if, if folks go on my website, uh, which is my full name, I offer um, a free chapter of my book. Um, where I um, guide you to taking three powerful actions every day um, towards what you want, towards, you know, owning your value, towards your desires. And if you take anything from this conversation, I I really want you to put pen to paper and start writing down your value narrative, what you bring to the table. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a wonderful closing statement. And for all of you tuning in now and later watching the replay, keep elevating friends. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in on the Career Coffee Chat podcast. It's been a pleasure. Feel free to reach out to me. My email is coacheurban at gmail.com or tweet at coacheurban, Instagram coach.eurban, or reach out to my Facebook group, Elevate Your Career. So I'd love to learn more about you, hear your insights, and what questions you have. You can find out more about me at coacheurban.com. And don't forget please do reach out on LinkedIn. You can find me at Aaron Urban. Until next time, cheers. Here's to caffeinating your career.